Okay, so this is the third and final part of um, of my tutorial set on uh, arbitrary output variables. Um, hopefully I've saved the best till last. Uh, we're going to take a look at uh, relighting. I'm going to start by looking at the role of the position point pass um, and the normals pass as a way of actually getting at some very specific uh, data which we can then use to manipulate the lighting of the scene without having to res resort back to re-rendering in the 3D. The position point pass, which we'll just take a quick look at, point position it's called in this particular example, this tells us the X, Y and Z position of every single pixel represented in RGB format. So let me show you how this works. If I just come in a little bit closer and we just take a look at the colour values down here at the bottom, we can see that when I place my cursor in that particular place, we can see that this is minus 10.5 on the red, 3.4 on the green, and 5.4 on the on the blue. Whoops! I just slipped my uh, cursor off there, so I'll just reset it somewhere. Some somewhere sort of fairly close. I know the values have changed but the principle of what I'm saying is the same. Essentially how this would work is that um, is that the value there of 10.53 would represent in the red channel would represent 10.5 pixels to the left. Uh, the 5.45 as it is now and the Y would represent 5.45 um, units uh, up and the 6.03 uh, on the blue would represent 6.3 units towards the camera or closer to the camera. If it was negative values it would be away from the camera. Okay. Now with the UV and the position passes we have different types of ways in which we could define the center of this information. Um, it can be either based on world space, it can be based on the object space or it can be based on camera space and each defines where the center of the information is from that perspective so for example if the value was in camera space the camera origin would be 0, 0, 0 on X, Y and Z and the values defined which we just said were 10.5, 5.45 and 6.0 would be in relation to the camera position in this particular case the representation is in world space so world space is 0, 0, 0 and the values are in relation to this so it therefore follows that it's important to choose the uh, the point position uh, that um, that's in a space that makes sense for the scene and also that you know what space it actually is and secondly if you're uh, if you're using point position and normal pass uh, in conjunction with each other it's very important that they're actually calculated from the same space or they just won't align. Okay, so that's just a little bit of an explanation about how the uh, how this particular pass works. Okay, so let's do something funky with this then. I'm just going to add in this position to points node. This is a really cool node um, that uh, that will basically take a representation um, based on uh, based on a pass, it will take a representation of the scene and it will output it as a 3D point cloud. So I need to get at the at the point position uh, information. So I'm just going to add in a shuffle node to do this, and I'm going to bring in the point position into this, and I'm just going to pass that into RG, into the uh, into the RGB channels so we've got the X Y and Z data from the point position node being outputted here as RGB again apologies if you saw a little glitch there it again the uh, the interface just sort of froze on me for a second uh, and then reset okay so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to connect the X Y and Z from the position to points into the bottom of the shuffle and then I'm going to connect the color to the original teapot I'll just uh, I'll just use a dot node just to break that out just so that we uh, just so we keep some sort of semblance of order in this in this whole thing and we can see a couple of things we can see that the interface has now flipped over into 3D mode if I just come out we can see something sort of quite interesting has happened we can see now that what we've got is a representation of our scene um, from, but but may it based on point cloud. So this is what the point cloud, uh, the point, the position to point node has actually done. It's turned all the geometry from this into a um, 
in, in, into a 3D representation based on the on the position to point information. This creates all sorts of opportunities because obviously this is a this is a 3D element now, so uh, we can we can essentially sort of traverse around this. We can pick a point in a very precise position within this space, and then add additional things like cards in into there, and then map textures onto cards, so we can get in there very very clearly. So presents a lot of opportunities. It does have some limitations. One of the things you can see as we spin round is that it gives us this, this point cloud, but only very much from the perspective of the camera. So we get some three-dimensionality, but it is it is relatively limited. But nevertheless, it allows us to do something which we're going to which we're going to do now, which is uh, which is a form of relighting a 2.5D uh, relighting of this scene whereby we're actually going to create some lights inside Nuke and we're going to get the lights to interact with the teapot as if the teapot was 3D inside the scene. This is incredibly powerful and flexible, uh, saves hours and hours of additional render time having to go back to the 3D application uh, when you want to make fairly simple and rudimentary changes. So I'm going to need to, to shuffle in the normals as well, so I'm just going to call this uh, point point position for this one. And we'll see on the node that that, uh, that gets appended. Um, and I'm going to make a copy of that, paste it, okay and this one is going to be for the normals so I'll rename the label and in the shuffle I just need to bring in the normals which for some strange reason were actually outputted called normal world but the same thing I just need to I need to transfer that information into the RGB channels and then just kill the alpha okay so before we actually go any further let's just connect this up to the normals pass and sw switch over to RGBA let's have a look at the normals pass and what it looks like yeah. this essentially provides the direction to which the faces of the points are angled so and the angles are essentially represented with a colour. So we want to position some lights to relight or at least add addi some additional light in to this scene. And moreover, we want to light. We want the light to interact and behave as if the elements were three-dimensional. And this is where the normals pass can can help us because this is actually defining the angle uh, of the faces of those points. So I'm just going to throw in a couple of. Um, a couple of no nodes into here. Whoops! Hit the wrong button there. So I want to put a point light in here. I want to put a scene in here, and I want to put a camera in here. Okay, so I've got myself some standard 3D nodes here that I need to use to connect this all up. So this is where it's going to get a little bit tricky within the uh, within within the screen capture. So let me just try and organise this a little bit. Just try and get a little bit of um, a little bit of control over this whole thing. I'll try and make a little bit more space over over this side. And just took these uh, these shuffle nodes over here out of the way. Okay, let me just kill a few of these dots and just re reassemble it a little bit. Um, all right. Oops. I've got a lot of nodes that need to be hooking into the uh, that need to be hooking into the teapot. So I'm just trying to organise these in such a way. That they're uh, that, that that they're neat. For example, that there I can now connect into that dot there, just to save us getting that sort of overlap, and just stick that stick that out of the way. Um, in fact, I'll just put these the other way around. So a little bit of gardening. Um, There we go. So we're back. Uh, we're back. Something like at, at, at that end. So we'll go there, and we've still got our position to points. So now we need to hook in our our 3D scene. So my position points needs to come into my scene. 
I come down here my point light can go anywhere as long as it's connected to the scene and the camera I'll be using in a second so if I connect that scene node in there now I'm pretty much back back where I started what I want to do is I want to just quickly reposition my light so let me just spin, her, spin it around kind of bring it in this direction and bring it up and then just move around Okay, somewhere near. I'll just manually punch in some some values just to position it precisely, just to get these numbers leveled out. And I'll I'll move it a little bit forward in Z as well. Okay, so my light is kind of in that sort of space, just sort of occupying that top left area. Uh, that should allow me just to project a little bit of light onto the side of this teapot. Okay, now so to make use of this light, we have to use a, a really special node called the relight node. Okay, this has a whole bunch of different pipes sticking out of it, um, but we need to get the color from the from the plate and the lights hooked into our scene so that it can go through there and get the, and get at the point light. Okay, I'll just again I'll just sort of try and tidy this up a little bit, something like. Something like that will do. Okay, and then we've got a camera port which we hook up to a camera. Now the unusual thing about the relight node is that it needs a camera, but the camera doesn't need to be configured. You can see here it's in zero world space pointing in completely the wrong direction. It really doesn't matter where it is and where it's looking because we're not actually going to be looking at this from this camera. It just the relight node just needs this camera. Okay. And we need one more element you can see here we've got one more pipe here which is the material pipe and we need to add a shader which will essentially um, just bung that in here the shader itself has a lot of uh, a lot of nodes but I just need to uh, I just need to get that material node and connect it up like so and essentially the the shader will kind of define the uh, it'll define the way that the light gets projected onto this uh, onto this particular scene So the final step now is to configure the relight node. We can see here that we need to tell it to refer to the normal vectors, so we need to get our normal vectors in and the point positions we need to get our point position into here. And that's essentially set up now. It's ref it's, it's drawing in the correct information from the pass. And we should be able to see the result of this now. So if we just connect up to the relight node and flick back into 2D we should be able to see what the uh, what the relight node is doing. We can essentially see these lights now being cast onto this surface and hopefully if I now start to move these lights around okay maybe need a smaller increment or bigger increments we can see how that light now is dynamically lighting the scene as it as if it was a three-dimensional scene you can particularly see that over the surface of the teapot you can see how that light is going around you know there's this is a flat image and yet the light there is interacting with that um, with that teapot as if that teapot was fully three-dimensional and I hope you can see the scope for this in terms of prevention of re re returning to 3d renders which could be incredibly time-consuming so I guess the final step would be to just composite the uh, this over the over the original. So we can take our relight node and add in a merge, and then just merge back against our original plate. Just sort of just drag this out a little bit and make a make it a little bit give it a little bit of space. Okay, and then use the plus operation to plus it over with it being a light. And now, if we just return to our our light in, our light and see what happens now as we start to move around. Okay, we can see that we can see that's working. So now we can we can basically perform minor adjustments. So, for example, we could um, we could go back into 3D. We could um, we could take our light and um, and recolor it. So we could, for example, give it a a little bit of a yellowy tint 
In fact, we can look at this in 2D while we do this and see the effects. So we can see that how, how my relighting there is casting across the whole thing. Could maybe increase the intensity if I wanted to. Another thing I could do, which I'll I'll nip into 3D to do this. Another thing I could do, which would be to uh, which would be to duplicate the light and give myself a give myself a, a second a second light on this and uh, get my get my second light and maybe light from a different area. Could you obviously use a completely different light type if I wanted? Uh, maybe uh, maybe change the tonality of this one so we we'll look at that in 2d so we can see how that's uh, we can see how that's working um, we could could take take the intensity up or the intensity down on these on these lights now individually and you can see the effects of this on the scene let's move that a little bit more Okay, so that's just a few practical uses for AOVs. Uh, I hope you found that uh, that exercise useful, and I hope that you'll uh, you'll take the opportunity to practice some of these techniques in your own nuke scripts.